Hi guys, in this video we are going to learn about acute respiratory distress syndrome. In this video we will see introduction, causes, clinical course, pathophysiology, diagnostic criteria and management. So let's begin. ARDS is basically a clinical syndrome which is characterized by severe dyspnea of rapid onset, hypoxemia and diffuse pulmonary infiltrates and all of this leading to respiratory failure. Prior to COVID-19 pandemic, the annual incidence of ARDS was 60 cases per lakh population and approximately 10% of the ICU admissions involved ARDS. Now let's see the causes. Direct lung injury due to certain factors or indirect lung injury due to certain factors both can lead to ARDS. Direct lung injury can be caused by pneumonia, aspiration of gastric content, pulmonary contusion, near drowning and toxic inhalation injury. And among these pneumonia is most important cause. While indirect lung injury can be caused by sepsis, severe trauma like multiple bone fractures, frail chest, head trauma, burns and multiple blood transfusion, drug overdose, pancreatitis and post cardiopulmonary bypass. Among this sepsis is a very important cause and also pancreatitis is frequently seen in ICU. Now other clinical variables which may make patient prone to uh, develop ARDS are older age group chronic drug abuse and pancreatitis as I just now told you that pancreatitis is, is an important cause. Amongst trauma patients, patients with Apache 2 score more than 16 have uh, increased risk of developing ARDS 2.5 times more than general population. Now let us try to understand the clinical course and pathophysiology. Basically ARDS has three phases. First one is exudative phase, second is proliferative phase and third is fibrotic phase. It is important to remember that most of the patient uh, recover after proliferative phase and some of them land into permanent injury known as fibrotic phase. Considering the timeline, exudative phase lasts for 7 days. After that, patient lands into proliferative phase which is from 7 to 21 days. And after that, many of the patient recover while some of the patient may land into fibrotic phase which is after 21 days. Now let us dive into exudative phase in detail. This is alveolus and this is capillary. These are the type 1 pneumocytes and there are also type 2 pneumocytes which secrete surfactant. This is capillary and these are endothelial cells. Knowing this is important because pathogenesis lies around this only. Now whenever there is direct or indirect lung injury due to some cause, this type 1 pneumocyte and this endothelial cell get damaged. This leads to loss of this alveolar barrier and then fluids and other proteinaceous material may go into alveolar space and also accumulate in this interstitium due to which this alveolar macrophage which are normally present in the alveolus get activated and they start secreting and stimulating pro-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 1, interleukin 8, TNF alpha and leukotriene B4 and due to which leukocyte get recruited in the alveolar space especially neutrophils and these neutrophils accumulate in the alveolar space and also interstitium. Along with this condensed plasma protein get accumulated in the alveolar space. Also the cellular debris and dysfunctional pulmonary surfactant form an hyaline membrane and the pulmonary vascular injury may cause vascular obliteration in form of microthrombi and fibrocellular proliferation. All this exudate accumulate around this space and that's why it is known as exudative phase and also there is edema everywhere. The alveolar edema predominantly involves dependent portion of the lung which leads to collapse of that segment and then decreases the lung compliance. This decreased lung compliance causes increasing work of breathing and leads to dyspnea and also there is intrapulmonary shunting which leads to hypoxemia. The microvascular occlusion which we just now seen results in reduced blood flow to the pulmonary arteries and this leads to decrease in the flow to the ventilated lung and this leads to increase in the dead space and then hypercapnia. The tachypnea and increased work of breathing leads to respiratory fatigue and ultimately respiratory failure. The lab values in ARDS are usually non-specific. The X-ray chest of a ARDS patient shows opacity which are consistent with pulmonary edema and only based on X-ray it is sometimes difficult to say whether it is pulmonary edema due to cardiogenic cause or it is ARDS. Hence if there is no risk factor for development of ARDS 
always we should rule out cardiac cause by doing echocardiography the ct chest of an ards patient shows bilateral pulmonary infiltrates and extensive heterogeneous lung involvement and all this we are talking about the exudative phase and all these finding are non specific hence we could say that the early features of ards are non specific and we should always rule out alternate diagnosis before labeling ards so the conditions that we have to rule out are cardiogenic pulmonary edema bilateral pneumonia and alveolar hemorrhage and less commonly ild toxic injury due to radiation and hypersensitive pneumonitis this was all about exudative phase now let us learn about proliferative phase as i have already told you proliferative phase lasts from 7 to 21st day and the first sign of resolution is also evident in this phase once the alveolar exudate get organized there is shift from neutrophils to lymphocyte predominant pulmonary infiltrates and the type 2 pneumocyte which i told you start to proliferate and synthesize new pulmonary surfactant and as i already told you few minutes back that many of the patient in proliferative phase may recover rapidly and are liberated from mechanical ventilatory support while some of the patient may develop progressive lung injury and may show early changes of pulmonary fibrosis now about fibrotic phase as we already know it occurs after 21st day and many of the patient recover after proliferative phase so some of the patient land into fibrotic phase and it is characterized by extensive alveolar duct and interstitial fibrosis in this phase there is marked disruption of acnr architecture and which leads to emphysema like changes with large bulla and patients in this phase may require long term mechanical ventilatory support and supplemental oxygen support also as we know that the injury involves alveolar on one side and the capillary on the another side the intimal fibroproliferation in pulmonary microcirculation leads to progressive vascular occlusion and which leads to pulmonary hypertension the fibrotic phase is characterized by increase in risk of pneumothorax decrease in lung compliance and increase in pulmonary dead space now let us learn about the diagnostic criteria of ards ards is basically diagnosed on basis of the famous berlin's criteria as the name suggest it is acute respiratory distress syndrome that means it is acute so the onset should be within one week of clinical insult or new or worsening of respiratory symptom the chest radiograph should show bilateral opacities consistent with pulmonary edema which are not fully explained by effusion lobar or lung collapse or nodules hence we are ruling out other causes of lung opacities the third point is absence of left atrial hypertension that means pulmonary edema developing due to left atrial pathology are also being ruled out the hydrostatic edema is not a primary cause of respiratory failure if no ards risk factor is present then some objective evaluation is required example echo to rule out hydrostatic edema just now we have discussed that we should always rule out cardiac cause if there is no risk factor for development of ards and the fourth point is severity which is based on oxygenation that is severity categorized in mild moderate and severe should be assessed at a peep of 5 cm of water the normal pao2 is 75 to 100 mmhg and normal fio2 in inspired air is around 0.21% as we already know hence the pao2 by fio2 which comes around 100 by 0.2 equal to 500 mmhg so normal pao2 by fio2 is around 500 mmhg so in mild cases the pao2 by fio2 is 200 to 300 mmhg while in moderate cases it is around 100 to 200 mmhg and in severe cases it is less than 100 mmhg and at this point it is important to know that the patient should fulfill all these four criteria to label the patient as ards now let us talk about the treatment it is important to note that general advances in care of critically ill patient has led to decrease in mortality rate of ards and hence there are certain factors which should be closely taken care of the first one is recognition and treatment of underlying medical and surgical disorder example pneumonia sepsis aspiration or trauma second is minimization of unnecessary procedures and their complications the third is standardized bundle of care approach for icu patients including prophylaxis against venous thromboembolism gastrointestinal bleeding aspiration excessive sedation prolonged mechanical ventilation 
and central venous catheter infection the next is prompt recognition of nosocomial infection and the last one is provision of adequate nutrition via enteral route whenever feasible and we will learn this under the following subtopics like management of mv support fluid management role of neuromuscular blocker glucocorticoid and other therapies and in the end recommendation now let's begin with management of mechanical ventilation it is important to know that respiratory fatigue increased work of breathing and progressive hypoxemia patients having this may require mechanical ventilatory support on putting the patient on mechanical ventilatory support our prime goal should be to minimize the lung injury there are two types of lung injury volutrauma or barotrauma and atelectic trauma the volutrauma and barotrauma is due to alveolar over distension and is dependent on tidal volume while the atelectic trauma is due to recurrent alveolar collapse and it is dependent on peep now as we have already discussed that the ards involves certain part of the lung and mostly the dependent part of the lung and rest of the lung is normal so whenever we put the patient on ventilation to ventilate this area the normal area tends to over distend and which causes volutrauma in that normal area a study was conducted to see the impact of tidal volume on this in one group they kept the patients on low tidal volume and in other group they kept the patient in conventional ventilator setting in low tidal volume it means that 6 ml per kg of predicted weight and the conventional is 12 ml per kg of predicted weight and it was noticed that the mortality rate was lower in the low tidal volume group compared to higher conventional tidal volume group now let's see about the atelectic trauma the presence of alveolar and interstitial fluid and loss of surfactant leads to decrease in lung compliance and in such situation the alveolus collapses without positive end expiratory pressure while they remain patent with peep so the patient should be kept on optimum peep the optimum peep is when there is minimized fio2 and adequate pao2 and without over distension of the alveolar many studies have been conducted to provide a value for optimum peep but they have failed to provide any such value hence this area still need some research in 2013 a trial was conducted which showed reduction in 28 days mortality from 32.8% to 16% in severe ards patient by prone positioning hence prone positioning shows a significant benefit in reduction of mortality rate but there are certain problems with prone positioning that is it requires critical care team as there is increased risk of accidental endotracheal tube extubation there is loss of central venous catheter and also there are some orthopedic injury associated with prone positioning now there were certain other strategies which were tried to improve the mortality rate such as recruitment maneuvers alternate modes of mechanical ventilatory support and lung replacement therapy by ecmo but all this failed to show any mortality benefit few studies with ecmo have showed a good result but still at the end it failed now what should be the fluid management in patient of ards in ards there is increase in pulmonary vascular permeability as we have already seen and this leads to interstitial and alveolar edema and also whenever there is increase in left atrial pressure normally there is increase in extra vascular lung water and this extra vascular lung water is compensated by the vascular integrity but in ards there is impaired vascular integrity and which augments this increase in extra vascular lung water hence a low left atrial filling pressure will minimize the pulmonary edema and will lead to increase in lung compliance improves the pulmonary mechanics and shortens icu stay and mv duration that is days of mechanical ventilatory support and by this we can say that diuretics which will decrease the left atrial filling pressure will show benefit in ards but diuretic have got their own limitations like it cannot be used in hypotension and it may cause hypoperfusion of the critical organs like kidneys now what is the role of neuromuscular blockade in ards in severe ards only sedation is often inadequate to maintain the ventilator synchrony and a randomized control trial showed that cisatracurium bisylate for 48 hours in severe ards patient may increase the survival and ventilator free days in a severe ards patient but there were no benefit in mild to moderate ards patient few points on glucocorticoids currently there is no evidence that support routine use of glucocorticoid in ards patient other therapies such as surfactant replacement 
pulmonary vasodilator uh, example inhaled nitric oxide and inhaled hypoprostenol sodium were also tried but showed no benefit now let us talk about recommendations this is a table given in harrison and we can see that low tidal volume is only in this list to have a group a recommendation that is showing strong clinical evidence and having mortality benefits other than that use of diuretic high pip and prone positioning show group b recommendation that is having limited clinical data also it is important to know that ecmo comes under group b recommendation and other than that all the, all the things we have discussed come under group c and group d recommendation so now to summarize the treatment of ards the first step is to initiate volume and pressure limited ventilation and the goals are tidal volume less than 6 ml per kg projected body weight plateau pressure of less than 30 ml of water and respiratory rate less than uh, 35 and then to oxygenate the patient to keep fio2 less than 0.6 and saturation of 88 to 95 percent we should try to minimize the acidosis and try to keep ph more than 7.3 and the last one is use of diuresis but we should keep in mind hypotension and hypoperfusion of kidneys so that is it for the video guys i hope you enjoyed the video and please hit the subscribe button to stay tuned with upcoming videos